What dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So, Happy New Year! We got the first weekly reset of 2024 here. And yeah, we're going to start a great new year in Warframe. Tons of new stuff on the way, such as Warframe 1999, full cross save, uh, you know, Whispers on the Wall, Gauss Prime, etc, etc. And I'm not even expecting infested liches this year too. So let's get into this weekly reset before I get too excited and start just blabbering on. Uh, hopefully you enjoy these videos. We do them every single week. Also, I'm usually live after this video goes up every week on the live stream, but there will be no live stream tonight. I'll be out partying, so hopefully you guys have a great time farming stuff out. Let's go over this weekly reset, and I'm going to go head out and eat some good food. All right. But yeah, uh, we do these videos every week. If you enjoy these types of things, just make sure you stop by every week. All right. For the first weekly reset, we got uh, 3x format Tashin for 75 Steel Essence. Not exactly worth it to me, but if you need some Forma and you have a bunch of Steel Essence sitting around, go for it. The other stuff here is the Evergreen Kuva and Relics down below. So yeah, DE is actually on vacation. I don't know how long they're on vacation for. I'm guessing it'll be like the second week of January. Uh, and the reason I'm saying that, the reason I actually care about that, is because that's going to be they're going to be opening the floodgates again for more players to be on the cross save, uh, you know, like get their accounts cross save merged and all that. Right now, it's not open. It was open for like a couple days. Uh, but yeah, when that comes back, get ready for a massive player number spike. Get ready for trades to go instantly. It's it's going to be, a, you know, we're pretty much going to have, like, I'd say another 10,000 players on PC at least on Steam. So, yeah, it's been going really good. Uh, Warframe is in a great place right now. We have the Whispers in the Wall update. Uh, it's been pretty fun. It's got some problems. It's not a perfect update, but good. players have been enjoying it a lot, and a lot of players are coming back to the game. They have been, like, gone since, like, Fortuna or whatever, so that's been great uh, to explain all the missions they have to get, come back to. You got that open world, that open world, this Daviri, that Zeraman. But yeah, let's go over to the Archites Weekly Wares, see what she's got. And just remind her, this stuff's not usually super worth it, but in case you are interested in it, we do have a... We have a Orokin Reactor Blueprint for 20 Pathos Clamps. We got a Shotgun Ribbon for 15 Pathos Clamps. We got a Forma Blueprint for 10 Pathos Clamps. 5k Koopa for 10 Pathos Clamps. And a Melee Ribbon Mod for 15. So the only thing that's remotely worth it here is maybe the Orokin Reactor, if you don't want to spend 20 plat on it or like do an invasion or something like that uh the rest of these not really super phenomenal uh but yeah that's what it is those will rotate weekly if you are interested in that there was somebody that one day that was interested in that and you know what? it does technically rotate weekly you are right it will probably be in there uh for the foreseeable future but yeah, as far as the archon hunt and all that guys netra cells have not been buffed but your netra cells did reset today every weekly reset the netra cells do reset you can do your five for the week and get your five silver melee fortification arcanes and uh maybe get some armor but uh, moving on to our uh, circuit stuff, let's see what we have for normal frames you can farm. Okay, so for normal frames, we've got we've got Ash, Frost, and Nyx. Uh, from what I remember, I remember Ash being very annoying to farm nowadays in Railjack missions. So I'd say definitely go for him. But as far as where the other frames come from, Nyx comes from Forid, the infested invasion boss. And Frost comes from, I believe it's the... Is it... It's not Tilrigger. It's not Tilrigger. It's the, uh, the the hammer guy. What's that guy named? Uh, Lesh Krill. Lesh Krill, I believe, drops Frost. Uh, and, yeah, he's not very hard to farm. But Ash is annoying to farm. I believe he comes from Railjack. So go ahead and pick him as your hardest to farm frame this week if you're doing the normal path circuit. For the steel path circuit, let's see what we got. We've got Arn Karnan. We've got the late trotting Karnan. we got some good ones this week. It's going to be a hard suggestion. Just a reminder, if you are rank 9 with the opportunity intrinsic, you can now pick these things as start as, instead of Incarnons each week. But for our Incarnons, we got the Bow Incarnon, the Latron Incarnon, the Firas Incarnon, the Firax Incarnon, and the Strun Incarnon. So it's going over what all these do. The Strun Incarnon is a very high-powered uh, shotgun, and the Incarnon form is a rocket launcher, basically. An exploding uh, heat damage shot, and you can actually massively increase the status chance or the crit of this thing. It's very powerful with a crit build or a status build for hit, uh, killing high-level enemies, Steel Path. Uh, I would recommend this one, but also... You know, there's if you only if you only want to get one primary this week, the Latron might be better than this. But yeah, rocket launcher, uh, shotgun with very high stats. I'd recommend using the Strun Prime on this one, uh, but all the Struns are fine with this. Uh, the Fear Axe in Karnon, what it's in Karnon form does is it gives you um, heavy slam efficiency as you leave behind a like five damage fire AOE when you do a slam attack. Yes, I'm not exaggerating. The fire slam is very low on the damage department, uh, but at least you get heavy slam. Efficiency, right? Uh, but yeah, this thing is actually somewhat decent. If you want to just use a punching weapon, it's probably one of the best punching weapons in the game. So if you're going for like the punching aesthetic, you can just beat up an acolyte with these uh, Furex. And I do that sometimes, but it's still not my favorite Incarnate at all. Uh, it's just under what It says, leave behind a heat field after heavy slam. This sounds so much more awesome. I was playing Elden Ring when this first came out, and it made me think of the Fire Giant's attack. It's not the Fire Giant's attack at all. It's just like 
one damage. But hey, if you got other stuff, if you have all these other things, you might as well go for this at this point. The Furious Incarnate is a very powerful uh, pistol. The Incarnate form for this is basically a a jet uh, a jet engine, like a really powerful, a very hot like heat blast, and it has low lowish range, but can do some serious damage. Also, the one of the mods for the Furious is called. Uh, Winds of Purity, I believe it's called, and it will heal you. It will give this weapon built-in life steal. So you have built-in life steal on your Incarnon. Very nice for just topping yourself off. Uh, the Incarnon forms can get lots of status chance or some increased damage when you have low crit chance. So yeah, this one's pretty powerful. One of the better pistols in the game. Then we move over to the Latron Incarnons. This is the one you should probably go for first this week. Uh, and it makes the Latron, like the really old weapon, the Latron Prime, become a top-tier weapon. One of the Incarnon options on this makes it where every hit, or rather whenever you do a puncture proc, removes enemy armor, and that could actually fully remove enemy armor uh, permanently. It does not depend on the duration of the, the puncture proc. It's just as long as you proc puncture, it is a permanent armor strip. So that's very good, but as far as what the Incarnon form of this thing does, uh, once you go into Incarnon form, it releases a fire, it's a fireball, a bouncing fireball launcher that has very good crit and damage, and of course those uh, those fireballs can also armor strip too, so just really, really powerful. Uh, also, the other option the non-armor strip Incarnon is just massive crit increase, 30% crit chance, 0.6 multiplier increase, that's before mods, so very, very strong, probably the top tier option this week, bar none. As far as a one an option that's not the best this week, bar none, we have the bow Incarnon. What does this one do? It gets increased range and heavy attack efficiency. For a impact focused stick, so yes, it's not very good. Uh, it's an Incarnon at least. If, if you if it's the only weapon out of these you have, too bad. Go buy the Furious from the market for credits. Uh, but yeah, this should be this should be your last priority. The bow and Cardon, the Furious and the bow should be your last priority this week. You should get anything besides these two. Uh, but this gets three extra meters of range, I believe it is. Oh, four extra meters of range. I take it back. It also gets heavy attack efficiency. Sprint speed and parkour velocity, but every Incarnon gets sprint speed and parkour velocity, so that's nothing important. It just gets more range and heavy attack efficiency, basically. And who's doing a heavy attack with a stick? So as far as the best options this week, uh, I think you should go for one uh, one primary and one pistol. So maybe go Furious and Latron. But if you say, I already got good pistols, dude. I already got the I already got the dual tox Incarnon, whatever. Go for double primary, then. Go for Strun and Latron. But I do think your number one priority should be the Latron this week. And also, guys, the, uh, the Heirloom Bundle is going away tonight, like... This video will probably be out like four hours before it goes away. The Latron is going to be revaulted, so we don't know if the price of this will go up over time. Same with the Boar. The Boar, Incarnon, or the Boar uh, Prime is getting revaulted too, so just be aware of that. But yeah, my top choices this week are Latron and Furious, uh, or Latron and Strud. Basically, just don't go for the melees. And good luck grinding those out on the Steel Path. As far as your Archon Hunt and all that Call Mission stuff, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, yeah, it's been a pretty fun week, though. Uh, pretty fun week, guys, with the... Um, with the, the whole like, cross-trade and stuff like that. The trades are going really quickly. Uh, looks like a lot of people are looking to play the game more than ever, so that's extremely exciting and great. I'm extremely, I'm happy with the way that Warframe's going right now. We got a Crimson Archon Shard at Chipper. La -di -da. We have the Archon Hunt giving... Actually, what hunt is it? Okay, so it's the, it's the Snake Archon with the Amber Archon Shards. I actually need these, so hopefully I get this... Uh, tomorrow. I'll be streaming tomorrow, not tonight, uh, to get this stuff. So as far as the mission types, so we got Sabotage, Interception, and the Boss Showdown. Uh, good luck with that one. The, this Archon does deal Toxin procs, so a frame that's only shield getting might be a little bit in the dangerous zone on that one. So just be aware of that. For the call mission, I believe it is Junk Run? Actually, it, it's uh, it's Prison Break, unfortunately, for me. Okay, so Prison Break, the longest call mission. Never grind stock out of this one. Just do the challenges and get it over with. Uh, so we've got Deathless, complete without dying or having veiled. Blow it up good, get 10 kills with grenades. Collect 5 gene stamps. This one's terrible now. It no longer marks them on your map, uh, or no longer marks them on your HUD with like a yellow icon. It's not only in the loot radar, it's terrible. And the loot radar is only like 20 meters, so very, very terrible challenge. Uh, get 10 kills while using the Hellion jetpack. You could basically get 10 kills with grenades while using the jetpack, and that would do double duty on that. Complete the mission in under 50 minutes. They're supposed to not do that on this one anymore, but they do it anyway. Uh, then also made for this, get 20 kills. So these three challenges right here are the, the easy ones. 10 kills while flying. These are the terrible ones. 15 minutes on this terrible mission, and also five gene stamps when the... They no longer mark them for you, just you have to do loot radar. So you're unfortunate there, but hopefully you're not doing the call mission anyway. Moving on to the Nightwave stuff. Reminder, I will have the Sporothrix augment up. The video for the Sporothrix augment will probably be like Tuesday. Uh, because I'm going to be doing the Baruch video likely tomorrow. Because I, I want to, to be honest, I like Baruch, but I want to take those shards back off Baruch and put them back in Korra. Or Kalervo. I, I like Kalervo and Korra more than Baruch, I think. Actually, no, I like I like Baruch more than Kalervo, but I like Korra more than, more than both of them put together. For your Nightwave challenge, we got forward thinking. Destroy a cruise ship with a forward artillery cannon. 
pretty easy. Gain a total of 5,000 standing across all Syndicate factions. That's one of the easiest challenges possible. Most things in this game are Syndicate rep, by the way. Uh, open one of each era relics, Lith, Meso, Neo, and Axie. They don't count Requiem on there, so you have Axie relic, Lith relic, Meso relic, Neo relic, any Fissure will do. And then your Elite Weeklies, we got the Path Less Travel. Complete five different Steel Path missions. If you don't have the Steel Path, don't worry about it. it <laughs> you, you shouldn't be getting every challenge done if you're a new, newer player with no Steel Path anyway. But you got five different Steel Path nodes. And then our Permanent Weeklies, we got uh, Kill 30 Eximus, complete 15 missions, Kill 500 enemies, and that's the uh, permanent weeklies. I guess the Antiquarian was actually an elite weekly of opening one relic of each type. Interesting. For your cred offerings, we got our evergreen stuff at the top. We've got some helmets here. We've got the Gyre Automaton helmet, one of my favorite helmets for Gyre. You have the Dagoth helmet, uh, the Gansian helmet. And yeah, if any of this stuff looks good to you, go for it, man. That doesn't look that great to me. Although we do have the Gruta Bathory helmet, that looks pretty cool. If you don't have the Tenogen. For Aura Mods, we got Steel Charge, Enemy Radar, EMP Aura, Holster Amp, and those are actually almost all good. Steel Charge is very, very good. Enemy Radar is very, very good. Holster Amp is very, very good, and EMP Aura is never used. So, yeah. And also, Enemy Radar is not needed as much as we have built-in Enemy Radar nowadays. If you want to get any of these, get Steel Charge as your top priority, and then I guess Holster Amp if you want to do like the Revenant swapping build from a couple days ago. Or from a couple months ago, actually. Uh, you have a Nightwave Augment of Bursting Mass Mutilus Quanta. The mass accumulates 200% of the damage done and deals 15 meter radius upon it expires. Secondary fire will manually detonate the existing mass. It's for the Mutilus Quanta. It makes the uh, the like bubble thing it blasts out explode and absorb damage. So maybe it could have some use case at some situation, but it's not really a must-have mod. Get it if you want to try out something goofy. We do have the Ceramic Dagger here this week. The Ceramic Dagger Blueprint in the Nightwave store, so that's great. Uh, if you're waiting for your Ceramic Dagger Incarnon, I think it's going to be like a week or two still. So at least get the Blueprint before the Incarnon comes out. We also got the Dark Dagger Blueprint. There is no Incarnon for that. For your Conclave Augmon, you got Purging Slash for Excal, Recharge Barrier for Volt, Power of Three for Ivara, and Prism Guard for Mirage. Out of all of these, the most useful one is probably Prism Guard for Mirage. And the Power of Three for Ivara is okay, but just not really necessary. Uh, so yeah, I'd say go for Prism Guard on Mirage. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the uh, helmet stuff, and we can talk about the upcoming week, basically. But yeah, it's um, it's going to be a pretty normal week in Warframe. I'd say we're just not going to have any DE in the DE is not going to be in the studio, so don't expect any of the hot fix or anything like that. Just keep grinding out your Hydroid Prime, keep grinding out your uh, you know your your Mesa Prime. That stuff will be unvaulted for another couple weeks, and then we'll be on to Saren, Volt, and some other characters too. So. I really appreciate the support over the years, guys. Uh, it's been really, really... Uh, I've been enjoying making content a lot for you guys, and I hope that you enjoy watching it, too, because I am planning on making a video every single day in 2024, uh, and I pretty much did that in 2023, but I did miss a couple days here and there. So let's hope I don't get super sick at any point, and I can just make a video every single day for you guys in 2024. Thank you so much for all the support. Let's go over the invigorations before I go to that party. All right, so what do we got? We got Baruch. Oh, man, we got a good one. 100% increased... Ability range for Baruch and a thousand armor. Well, too bad I'm not using that for my video tomorrow, but uh, yeah, extra range in Baruch is great for uh, using his sleep ability to cover more area. I was using uh, Wrathful Advance from Kalervo on him, so I guess more teleport range technically too. A thousand armor is not really that needed as he can shield gate pretty well, but hey, extra range is extra range. I will take that one. Moving on to Korra. Oh darn, I wish we could kind of switch these ones around. I got secondary damage for Korra and 200% energy max. I guess the energy max is nice, but I'm, I'm usually using the Grimoire on Korra nowadays, and that is not really a DPS weapon. I'll take the energy max for, you know, spamming more abilities, but yeah, not a very good one for Korra. And then the last one for Ivara. Oh, man. Okay, well, I might have to do a level 10,000 Ivara this week, then, because increased primary crit chance and increased ability efficiency. This will make it where Ivara drains, like, 0.2 energy per second in her, in her cloaking, and also it will make a massive primary crit chance increase for one-shotting level 10,000 enemies. It's not going to work on the the kunai for her, but I, you know what? I use the kunai on Ivara a lot, so maybe I'll use the Dread or something this time. So maybe expect that Ivara at least level 10,000 mission on stream, maybe a video as well. But yeah, guys, I appreciate all support. Lots of videos coming out this next week. Uh, make sure you are, you know, taking some time to relax as well if you're just grinding these events really hard. Gargoyles Cry is going to still be here for another week or two. Oh yeah, if you got this far in the video... Uh, just a reminder, Gargoyles Cry, those curses reset weekly, guys. It's not just a one-and-done kind of thing. So go to your dojo. This percentage right here is going, it's at 66%. So go to your dojo and turn in your, your curses, and we can get closer and closer to getting that, uh, that cosmetic 
unlock community wide. So yeah. Uh, if your clan mates aren't signing in or whatever, it's probably not going to matter. It only takes, takes like one person per clan to turn these in to get it all maxed out anyway. But just make sure that you're doing that at some point during the week. If you don't, you will not get the maximum tier trophy. And also, um, you know, basically we will have, potentially we would not have enough progress if not enough clans sign in to uh, to get the uh, to get the cosmetics. Let's see if I can even turn it in. Contribute. Oh, nobody. Somebody didn't turn them in. Okay, I actually get to turn these in for the first time in like weeks. Cool. Such exquisite despair. So yeah, that is you should be doing that every week. We are 66% to this, and we'll probably you'll probably have like one week to buy this at the end, guys. Alright, I'll see you next time. Happy New Year. You guys take it easy, and I will see you very soon. Alright. Bye-bye, guys. Later.